What is going on, y'all? I'm back with a video, but this is one that I really did not expect to have to make and definitely did not want to make. So, most of you have probably already seen the video if you're watching this, because hopefully you're subscribed already. If not, go ahead and subscribe for me. I really appreciate it. But, as you guys know, a couple years ago, went on the hunt of a lifetime for Interior Mountain Grizzly in Alaska. Had an insane hunt, seven day hunt. We killed two bears. One of them ended up being in the top 35 that were ever killed. Uh, posted that video right as soon as we got back. We had high hopes that it was gonna be in the top 10 that were ever killed, maybe even the biggest, because that thing was just monstrous. The guide, that was the biggest one that he had ever guided a hunt and killed. And uh, he was just giving us uh, his best estimate on a measurement, school measurement, just looking at it. We didn't have anything to measure it with when we were out in the field. So I ended up being a top 35 ever kill, which is pretty incredible. There's been thousands of uh, interior grizzlies killed since they started keeping record, record books on them a long time ago. Um, so it was an awesome hunt. Now, a couple things that I do want to address about that video. I got a ton of hate off of that video. And the main thing that people were hating on was the first shot on the big bear. And I thought when I was editing the video, I knew that I was going to get some hate for that but I want it to just keep it real with you guys because one thing I take pride in my channel is I post the negatives along with the positives. Like, I want you guys to see, like, I'm just an everyday guy out here doing this. We're just everyday people. Stuff happens. It doesn't always go as planned. You don't always put a perfect shot on them. Now, there were several factors in that that escalated to that shot. And uh, one of the main things is we saw that bear and had to cover a lot of ground very fast. So, I mean, we were legit like jogging to get up in front of this bear. They have like a six foot stride. So every step that he takes, he's covering six feet of ground when we're covering three feet at the most. So, I mean, we got to take two to three steps just to keep up with his one step. So we had to jog a long way to get up in front of that bear. We were all winded by the time that we got up there. We're wearing big hip boots because it's soggy, the ground's soggy, you're trying to keep your feet dry and if you've ever had to jog in hip boots or waders I mean you know that that's a chore so covering that much ground trying to get in front of it and then our adrenaline was I mean through the roof we finally got up there weren't sure if it was going to work out and then that bear turned and just started coming straight at us so I mean I was shaking so bad holding the camera you guys saw how bad I shook on the shot I was just super pumped like we were so stoked up about the whole situation so that was a lot of what had to do with the first shot. Um, I mean, I like to think that I could have made that first one, but in all reality, I might have missed the whole bear. I mean, they're big animals, but we were so fired up having to run that far. I couldn't even hold the camera still. I can't imagine David having to hold the rifle still on that thing. So he did an excellent job. And I thought at first, when I was editing the video, it crossed my mind to just go straight from that shot have the bear running off and then us walking up on the bear like it had ran it was a fatal shot we got up to it and killed it but i didn't want to do that because i try to keep it real with you guys i want the channel <clears throat> i want to be able to show everything step by step exactly how it goes down because that's that's what i'm doing on youtube i just want to walk with you guys you guys get to experience the same things that i get to experience so that's why i left it in there you guys can keep hating because I don't care. It was an incredible trip, but just wanted to talk about that a little bit. Second thing I wanted to address, the other thing, the other part I got a lot of hate on the video is because a lot of people just don't know about mountain grizzlies, their populations, and how healthy the population really is up there. I mean, we were in one single valley. We never moved because once you, when you're grizzly hunting, you want to get in one area and try not to move, you just wanna stay in glass because the more ground scent that you're putting on the ground, traveling back and forth to camp, going out to glass, you're keeping bears out of the area. As soon as a mature bear picks up on human scent, I mean, he's gone. He's getting out of there and you'll never see him again. So we sat in one valley and we ended up seeing 11 bears in the seven days that we were there. 11 confirmed different bears. They were all different bears. And that just goes to show how many are in that area, How 
high the population is. Wildlife biologists in Alaska have also determined that there are plenty enough bears to have a sustainable, po a sustainable population that we can go and hunt them. It actually helps the environment in the end because you're taking out these mature male bears and that's what we were after. When these mountain grizzlies reach maturity, they pretty much get to a point where their main drive is to hunt down and kill other bears, other young bears, because they're territorial. They're trying to keep other bears out of their area. Rob, our guide, was telling us stories that uh, he said that a lot of times the male bears will be the first ones to come out of hibernation because the females will be still in the den with the cubs, so they're trying to let the cubs get a little bit older. He's watched male bears walking over a snow-covered mountain with their nose on the ground, stop, start digging, dig out a female and the cubs and kill them. So being said, obviously we want to be managing the population and taking out those older males because it gets to a point where they're just killing every other bear that's in the area and you're not getting any new young bears coming up. And they're also apex predators with no other predators besides themselves. So you want to <clears throat> keep the population in check just like wolves, coyotes, anything else to make sure that all the other game animals can thrive in the area. So. Going forward, I've got some really, really bad news. The taxidermist ended up completely screwing up on both of the bear hides. So the main reason in making this video is to warn other people so that you all do not ever use this taxidermist. Who we used for taxidermy was DNC Expeditors out of Anchorage, Alaska, and it has been a complete nightmare. This is the worst customer service that we've ever had to deal with, worst situation we've ever been on, especially with something as epic and really as important as this. I mean, I was excited about having my dad's bearskin rug laying in front of my fireplace when I've got grandkids rolling around on it and telling stories about it, and that is completely shot down the drain because of these people. Rob has been a guide for over 40 years. He knows exactly what he's doing. He's had never had anything like this happen before. Um, he skinned the bears while we were in the field and then we put like literally I think it was like 10 pounds of salt on each hide because we did not want anything to go wrong. We wanted to make sure that we got them out of there. For a spring bear the hides were immaculate. Rob said multiple times how they were in such great shape and um, that actually was the first excuse that the taxidermist made with us was oh they're spring bears the hides aren't any count. So over a year goes by and we haven't heard anything from the taxidermist. Finally, dad decides to reach out to him just to kind of get some type of update from him. We were getting a little bit worried at this point, just it had been so long and hadn't heard anything, which we, I mean, taxidermists, you expect that. A lot of the times they're super busy. They have a lot, they get backed up. It's completely understandable. They're in high demand and the work they do, it takes time. It takes a lot of time and uh, have a lot of respect for guys that do it. it it's super cool art. It takes a lot of work. So dad reaches out to the guy and he responds by saying that both of the bear hides were completely ruined and his first excuse was that they were spring bears and that it wasn't worth it. So going from that, dad explained to him, Rob said they're in perfect condition. He's been doing this for more than 40 years. This guy's been working with Rob for several years. He knows that Rob knows what he's talking about. So then after that excuse, he went on to the next one and said that we had uh, not gotten him the bear hides in time, which was a complete lie. But Rob took him out and then got him to a DNC in Anchorage. But after this goes down, he never apologizes through the entire situation, never takes any, any blame. He just blames everything else, blames us, blames the guy, blames the spring bear. It was just honestly ridiculous. Like, if he had come to us and just said, I messed up, made a mistake, the hides are in bad shape now, I'm sorry, then it would have been a completely different situation because, I mean, we understand. Like, everybody makes mistakes, especially in, in work. I mean, I make mistakes every week in, at work. Everybody does. It's just part of it. That was the most frustrating thing, that he just wouldn't come clean and be honest with us. So after this goes down, he said that he would refund us and get the claws from the bears. So dad's like, all right, you know, whatever, nothing else we can do. At least we'll get the claws and get refunded. So almost two years later now, just about a week ago, dad got a check and some bear claws in the mail. He got a check for $200 
and he got some bear claws that were not his. They're not even grizzly claws. You can look at them and tell right off the bat that they are black bear claws. I mean, it was absolutely insane. So this is the third time he's lied to us and he hasn't fully refunded us. I mean, after knowing that it's his fault, he could have at least sent us the full refund and then sent us our the right claws, but he didn't. He, I mean, it's untelling what happened. You know, honestly, he might have stopped on the side of the road in Alaska, cut some claws off of a roadkill bear and mailed them to us. I mean, at this point, who even knows? So it has just been absolutely insane having to deal with this. David's bear, exact same story, completely ruined the hide. It's a disaster. So at the end of the day, we're never even gonna know what happened. Like, did they sit in a warehouse for a year and water got to them and they got messed up? Or did he take them and have them done and sell them or keep them for himself? I mean, we don't even know, we'll never know because he's not gonna be honest with us. He's never gonna tell us the truth. So I just really wanted to make this video and give other people a heads up because they're well known up there and, and they're probably going to be one of the top people that you look at if you're hunting in Alaska to have them do your taxidermy. I really just don't want anybody else to get screwed over by this guy like we have because it's been an absolute horrible situation that we've had to deal with and just the disappointment that we've all felt because I mean, it's a trophy of a lifetime. It was the hunt of a lifetime, and now we're walking away with nothing. <laughs> well, walking away $900 in the hole with nothing. So it's just a complete disaster. But I'm going to drop the link to these guys' uh, business in the description. So you guys get on there. I mean, leave a review if you feel like it. But I'm just trying to warn other people so that this doesn't happen to them. It's just been horrible i mean this also just makes me super thankful that i was there and got to film it all because we have those memories to look back on we can look at up close footage of the bears and just look at how awesome the animals were and i'll be able to show that to my grandkids one day so that makes up for it a little bit but it's just not the same you know but anyways thank you guys so much for watching this video thank you guys for watching the other videos and everybody who subscribed i really appreciate it just help me get the word out about this bozo so that this doesn't happen to other people Catch you guys on the next one.